Volume of the lake is another factor to consider. In all, over 7 billion cubic meters of water have to be checked. The water is cloudy and cold. Even on the hottest summer days, the temperature at the bottom never exceeds 5 degrees centigrade. Finally, the shores of the lake are rather steep, so it's hardly likely that the remains of a dead monster would wash ashore. To try to get a better picture of the animal, all we can do is try to confirm the observations. Such as the significant one by Mrs. Moyer in 1936. It was drizzling slightly. The lock was grey, the sky was grey. The creature was a very dark grey colour, contrasting clearly with the lighter background of water and sky. The monster was facing in the direction of Inverness and didn't move. It was about 10 metres long and had three humps. The body was long and thin and the head small. This kind of account has given rise to a stereotype. We most often imagine the monster as a kind of large prehistoric animal, or to be precise, a reptile of the Mesozoic era, the Plesiosaurus. Lacking any concrete proof about the secret, we can still examine the lake environment to analyze the various theories about the monster with a critical eye. The Plesiosaurus theory is hardly tenable, given the site and the observations. The Plesiosaurus was an egg layer, and it had to lay its eggs on land. It would at the least leave tracks, if not eggs. And given that the Plesiosaurus was a reptile that lived in warm regions, one would hardly expect to find one in the Scottish climes. In 1982, electronic engineer Robert Craig formulated an interesting hypothesis, but one that was very disappointing for the monster's supporters. Robert Craig noticed that the Scots pines flourishing on the lake shores sometimes fell into the lake. The wood eventually soaks up so much water, the trunks sink. Craig theorized that under the water pressure at the lake bottom, part of the pine resin may be forced out of the wood to form a sheath around the trunk. This resin coating would prevent the water in the wood fibers from escaping. As the tree rotted, pockets of gas would form inside, turning the resin-coated trunk into a veritable float and bringing it back up to the surface, where the gas pockets would explode, sending the trunk to the lake bottom forever. This ingenious theory may well explain the mysterious wakes and odd shapes seen on the lake surface, but it can't account for many of the sightings. The most interesting theories are those that think Nessie may be a member of an unknown animal species. We may not be able to get a clear picture of the monster, but we can at least get a general outline. The fact that Loch Ness is now a freshwater lake doesn't help us much. Loch Ness used to be a fjord that was cut off from the sea several thousand years ago. Sea animals may have been trapped in it at that time. and the lake is still connected to the sea by the Ness River and by another river and the Caledonian Canal. On the other hand, we can be almost certain that Nessie is carnivorous. The lake waters are poor in aquatic plants and plankton, and it would be hard for several large herbivores to survive in it. But the lake is teeming with fish, particularly salmon. French scientist Jean-Jacques Barlois has estimated that given an average salmon weighs five kilos, and that the fish population is evaluated at 13 million, there are 65,000 tons of available biomass in the lake, enough to feed 150 monsters weighing 1,200 kilos each. All serious observers agree that if there is a monster, there must be a group of them living and reproducing in the lake. Until we're able to solve the riddle about the inhabitants of Loch Ness, the lake will continue to exert its power over our imagination. Everyone has his own vision of Nessie. Generally, we imagine him to be peaceful and rather fantastic, a kind of modern dragon, a gentle monster of contemporary legend. Norway, several hundred kilometers northeast of Loch Ness, also has its monsters. But the country itself is so beautiful that one immediately wonders if this is really nature or a fairy tale.
This road, twisting up the mountainside, is called the Trollstigen, Troll Road.